we introduced Redshift, how to set it up, some of the basics of using a light, and then kind of the basics, the way the material looks in the attributes manager. Now, what we haven't talked about is how Redshift materials are constructed. So let's go ahead and double click on the standard material we created. You're gonna notice this is a very different interface than uh, you were used to. <laughs> um, so if you've been using the standard materials uh, and the old legacy material um, window, this is the way that um, Redshift does materials. And this is actually pretty common across other 3D softwares as well, um, where it's a node-based thing where you essentially create nodes make put them together and then you tell them where you want these different materials to go so let's go ahead and look at like how say we need how we can add let's say we want this to be noisy we don't want to just have this solid base color on here we would like to have noise you know use noise in some way to to make this material so there's a whole bunch of nodes. Um, the easiest way, there's a couple, I mean, there's a couple ways. I could hit plus here, and it, it immediately puts me into the search bar. I could also double click anywhere in this space, and it immediately puts me in the search bar. And if I search for just color, um, because that's the channel that I'm going into, you'll see that there's color composite, color correct, color layer, right? A bunch of other things here, um, which we'll talk about in a bit, and um, a color constant. Um, so let's go ahead and create a color constant to start with. So I'm going to double click on color constant, and you'll see that. And then what I want to do is I want to connect this node to my color node. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring this over, connect this, and you'll see now my color is white. It's overwriting what the um, original color was. So let's look over here. And if we, if I select any of these nodes in here, you'll notice that the attributes change. And what it shows me is this is the material and this is my current node. Currently I have the output selected. So this is both, this is the final setup and it'll tell me my inputs. And it says this Redshift standard is my input for my surface. If I pop this open, it's actually gonna have all of those settings that we were working with earlier all in there so I can actually access that from from within this node. I could also just select Redshift standard. You can see that now I've got again the same settings here. Um, you'll notice that my color though is set to color constant. So if I flip this open it's going to say my input is this color and I can make a change here. Or I can just select this node, go to my color, and let's go ahead and change this to like, I don't know, purple for now. All right, so now we've got this beautiful purple tree. It should update. Ooh, look at that. Gorgeous. Okay, so we've got our constant color and you're like, why this is super annoying. What if I want to have noise? What if I want some variation in the surface? So let's go ahead and double click. And because it's noise, we just type in N-O-S-I-E, noise. And you'll see there's two options. There's this legacy noise and maxon noise. Maxon noise is the one we want. It basically breaks out all the things that the maxon noise engine that we've been using in countless tutorials before this, all the different types of noise that it has. It just, it allows you to use all of those, whereas this is much more basic. So we're gonna go ahead and double click on this. And you'll see that there's this out color. Note that yellow goes to yellow, purple goes to purples. You know, they have these different colors to let you know that these are different types of materials, um, of values. Purple, I believe, is a vector. Yellow is a color. And what that means is color contains four values. It contains red, blue, green, and alpha. And so, um, and whereas like the bump map, um, a vector is usually, it's a vector three, which just basically means that it has, it's RGB, it's what, or XYZ um, are the three values in there. So in order to connect this noise, I can just like drag this over here. It's going to replace that color. And I'm going to get like black and white noise on this object. 
So let's go ahead and we have, a, let's select our noise node. And if we come down here, you'll see in the attributes that we've got all the same things uh, more or less that we would have in our um, standard noise. Let's go ahead and change this um, something um, gaseous. Sure, let's do gaseous. All right, so you can see how it's applying that noise to the surface. Um, and you'll note, right, we still have that, the, our, our reflection layer still has that weird color. So we've get, we're getting kind of a strange effect here, but that's, that's cool. Um, so again, I can choose colors in here. Um, I'm gonna leave it black and white right now. I can adjust the seed value. I can adjust the number of octaves. So this is, if I drop this down, it's gonna be right much less octavey. I can crank this up and we're gonna have a lot finer detail. It really just depends on what you're looking for. Are you looking for clouds or something less cloudy? Um, you can animate the noise on the surface. We're not gonna worry about that right now. Um, but then there's this input and output. If I click on input, um, there's different ways we can do inputs. We're not gonna worry about that right now. But if I wanna scale the noise up and down, this is where I do it. If I wanna do it uniformly, um, this is like the global scale in the old settings. Right, if I crank this up, that noise should get a lot larger on the surface here, right? You can see that made a pretty big change. Um, or I can make it, you know, significantly smaller and I'm gonna have a much, uh, the noise that's much tighter. If I want to adjust the scale in one of these three directions independently, I can do that too. So if I set this to, I don't know, let's just say 10 in the, what would be the Y, it should stretch all of this noise vertically. Um, let me go ahead and move this out of the way, right? But so you can see now these are all vertically stretched. Um, okay. If I go to output um, and scroll down on this little guy, output is where, right, we have our cycles, our low clip, high clip, brightness, and contrast. So if I was to drop my high clip down, I should pull more whites in to this. And you can kind of see all of this happening on all these different little previews. Um, if I want this, you know, maybe I want some of that, those darker areas to be stronger too. Okay. So I can, I can get all of this. I'm going to go ahead and set that low clip um, down a little bit lower, but above zero. Um, cycles, not going to worry about that right now. And again, you can adjust your brightness and contrast, um, which in this case, we don't really need to do. Okay. So let's say I'm happy with this noise. I don't know why I would be happy with this setup as it is, but but let's say I want it to be magenta, or maybe I want to mix this with another, maybe I want to mix this with another type of noise or something like that. So what I can do is, um, and we're just going to be using this. I know in this case I could, right, change the white to magenta and I'd get the result that I want, but this gives me a bit more, what I'm going to do gives me a bit more freedom. So if I double click over here and I type in color again, this option here under FX color is color composite. So color composite um, basically allows me to take two color um, nodes and blend them together. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click there and I'm going to take the out color. Let's say that, let's make the noise our base color. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this the base color. Note that you can have multiple, um, from your output, you can go to multiple inputs, but you cannot have multiple outputs go to one input, right? If I was to pull this over here, it's going to switch it. Um, but if I was to pull this over here, it's gonna let me do that, right? Which isn't gonna be very useful. <laughs> so I'm gonna make this the base color again. Sure. And then you'll notice like right now, my preview is just, this noise. And if I select my color composite, you'll see that the composite mode is base color. By default, it just outputs whatever your base color is and it ignores the blend color. So all we have to do here is we can now change and we can go through and you might recognize many of these as uh, blend modes from Photoshop, from um, some of the other tutorials for um, Cinema 4D as well. So if I switch this to multiply, Right now, basically, it's multiplying the white and black values of this by the color of this, right? And so black 
is is zero. So anything times zero is zero. And anything times one is one. And anything between one and zero is going to be somewhere between one and zero, right? So we get this multiplication of these two things. Now note, at this point, right, my material is still black and white, and that's because I just need to take this out color and plop it in there. And now I should have this set. Now, while we're here, we might as well switch, try a couple of these different options. I'm going to go ahead and do screen instead, right? And so you can see screen kind of does the opposite. It's going to say wherever zero is, it's going to fill in the color. Wherever white is, it's going to be white, right? And I actually like this ugly, ugly thing better than the previous one. So I'm going to leave it there. But, you know, you could pause the tutorial and you could go through and test um, several of these. Add might have a similar effect. Yeah, it's like slightly different. I think it's a little bit more red um, than it was previously, than it was when I did the um, screen. Um, yeah, it's like you can see it's a little more dull um, on the screen, which is actually what I like, but it's up, it's up to you how you do that. Okay, so I've got my color out, color out going into this composite and going into here, right? This gives us a lot more power. Um, I could also, um, and so, you can also chain this. So I could um, create another noise. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. And we're just doing this to, sh you know, just to show you kind of some of the power of this. So let's say I have this other noise. I'm selecting this. Um, I'm going to choose, let's just go with, uh, where is it? Mo let's do mod noise. Mod noise is like <laughs> pixelated. It's going to be very obvious when this gets in here. Um, and then with the mod noise, I'm going to go ahead and bring the low clip up so we get some darker tones on that. So it's just really obvious. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, I could either, if I hold down option, click and drag that. Oh, by the way, when these graphs get a lot larger, holding option, clicking and dragging is going to move you around the scene. Um, if I have something selected and I hit Command or Control C and then click somewhere else, Command and Control V, um, I can paste that same thing. Obviously, it's not connected to anything. Um, I'm going to make this my blend color. This will be my base color. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, it's already set to screen. It's set to the same setting it was before. I'm going to go ahead and do this one as multiply. So it's more obvious what's going on. And then if I drop this in here, right, now those two types of noise are applied over one another. And I've got whatever's going on here <laughs> going on. So we're going to uh, leave this beautiful plaid um, as our setting. But So you can kind of see, like, I'm doing all of this work on here. I could do something similar for the bump channel. Right. We could do a lot of other work and build really complex materials. What's nice is a lot of these things can then be animated too. So you could have the different noises moving in different ways if you get to that point in your cinema career. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and save this. This is a great moment to save our scene. And so this is how things are set up in there. Now I've got all of this set up here. So let's go ahead and close our node editor real quick. And let's select this, just click on this one, our material once. And you can see right now, if I pop open color, <laughs> and it just keeps going deeper and deeper, right? But I can get to all of my nodes via um, th this menu if I want to. Obviously, it's typically easier to come in here and just select the node and then make the adjustment. Um, but yeah, but you can dive really deep in this menu through through here. Okay, great. So we've got our material. Maybe we do want to increase, maybe want, we do want this to have some emission, but maybe let's make it a magenta e color. Um, and then let's just crank it up just a tiny bit, right? You can see even a little bit of difference is making that feel kind of weird. So I'm going to go really low, but it'll be just a little bit of glow in there. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. All right, and let's stop this.